शाल आई स्टार्ट हेलो हाँ शुरू कर दीजिए ओके फाइन हेलो एवरीवन आई एम प्रोफेसर पंकज विश्वास आई एम द कोर्स इंस्ट्रक्टर ऑफ दिस कोर्स नेम वेल्डिंग एप्लीकेशन टेक्नोलॉजी दिस इज ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कोर्स इन वेल्डिंग फील्ड यू कैन से इन दिस कोर्स generally you have already completed uh, i think 3 uh, 4 weeks so in this 3 4 weeks you have learned different different topics which is especially uh, you can say fundamental of welding related topics as well as this topics will be highly applicable in the field of research uh, so if you have any queries this is live session if you have any queries you can ask me questions we can discuss in details uh, if you have any doubt about this course so first of all i want to tell something about this course this course is basically uh, organized in such a way where you will get the taste of most of the topics related to welding you can say because in this course i have try to uh, first uh, categorize the welding process depending upon different phases actually phases in the sense like what are the first of all i want to say that uh, i had another course that is uh, uh, that course name is fundamental of welding science and technology there i covered the uh, conventional uh, different types of welding process which are commonly used in industrial field apart from that course actually in this course i try to focus different types of advanced types of welding process as well as here i try to uh, means uh, give you the details about different types of welding process related to you can see phases phases in the sense like depending upon the phases welding is categorized into three different categories one is called solid state welding another one is called liquid state welding another one is called uh, solid liquid state welding you can say so first of all i explain uh, detail about all these uh, categories of welding especially i uh, discussed in this course about solid state welding like fi uh, friction welding the here i have discussed different types of friction welding process like friction stir welding so many other different categories of friction welding process are there that in details i discuss in this course apart from these things in this course i discuss about different types of fusion welding process uh, like here i have discussed fusion welding process like plasma arc welding process then uh, you can say uh, the uh, uh, you can say topics which i have not covered in my first uh, nptel course that related fusion welding uh, process that is called liquid state welding process you can say here i discuss in details about different types of uh, liquid state welding process like plasma arc thermite welding lot of other welding process also apart from these things in this course i discussed about two different very important categories of uh, uh, solid liquid state welding process that is brazing and soldering uh, joining techniques which a lot of application in different industrial application as well as electrical electronics electrical field that you know so what happens i had uh, discuss in details uh, about all this uh, welding process apart from this thing in this course i had uh, discussed about the uh, highly important topics related to welding you can say and that is called uh, uh, distortion and residual stress well in well induced distortion and residual stress here i have discussed in details about distortion as well as welding induced residual stress how the well induced residual stress this distortion is predicted how we can uh, mitigate how we can uh, predict all these thing by different different technique that related things in details i have discussed in this course okay now at the end of this course you will find the different types of design consideration of welding process and application of that design concept in the field of welding where i have discussed depending upon the different loading condition how to design a welding joint so this course is highly important course you can say where i try to uh, discuss uh, about welding process as well as its uh, means its effect 
in the field of structure like uh, distortion and residual stress as well as how to design a welding uh, structure that related thing in details you can say i have discussed in this course so in this course you will feel uh, and get the taste of most of the concept related to welding okay because this course not only covered the manufacturing part of welding here i have also tried to cover different types of design oriented uh, part of welding also so here you will get both theoretical knowledge as well as uh, like some analytical then numerical uh, related concept of welding process in details okay now if you have any queries you can ask ask me questions like one of the participants uh, in this live session who asked me sir your lecture is fully english can you explain in some part of hindi yeah actually already uh, that uh, means transcription of uh, this course in hindi and other languages already started so definitely we'll uh, get help Uh, from nftl team itself they will definitely help you apart from this thing if you want any help uh, related to this uh, hindi transcription of this course you can directly contact with me actually i am professor pankaj vishesh from mechanical engineering department iit guwahati you can any time contact with me by phone as well as uh, you can say by email i will i'll provide my contact numbers also if you want i am do you have, have any questions if you have any questions you can ask me only one question i have seen so what i was telling so now i am going to discuss little bit in details you can say about this course like uh, this course is organized uh, i have already told you uh both different types of welding categories then uh what is the effect of welding process in a structure that is called distortion and residual stress especially which is a you can say this that is a negative effect of welding in uh a structure generally we should have a welding structure with minimum distortion distortion means deformation as well as we should have a welding structure with minimum Weld in this residual stress. So that's why how we can, uh, uh, you can say how we can get a minimum distortion and minimum residual stress welding structure. That that related thing in details I have discussed in this course. I have provided you different mitigation techniques. Mitigation techniques means how we can minimize this distortion and residual stress in a welding structure. In details I have discussed. So in this course you will find. what are the different experimental methodology generally we use to predict this residual stress as well as distortion its mathematical details its uh, you can say uh, uh, its mathematical details is derivation in details actually i have explained in this course so here generally the uh, like residual stress nowadays is, is a very well in this residual stress nowadays is a very important you can say topics in the field of higher study or you can say uh, for research oriented uh, topics generally well in this residual stress is a very important topics yeah i am going to give prince i am going to give you uh, a number so it will be better uh, you could if you can mail me i am sending my mail address i will uh, send my phone number there itself so i am sending my mail id here mail id here i am sending this is my official mail id prince okay yeah i will send you this uh, my contact number to you no problem i have seen actually lot of participant yeah yeah kundan you can ask me question no problem you are welcome you can type actually what you want to ask okay sir okay i will type it i will type it. otherwise you can ask me in uh, phone also no problem in uh, microphone also no problem yes sir first of all yeah. sir yeah. i i thank you for uh, uh, the lecture you had uh, provided through fundamental of welding science i had uh, gone through that yes. i had done that also 
and uh, i don't know if you remember or not uh, you had uh, taken up my questions uh, question that uh, in the live session of that course where i had asked you also about what are the best uh, like opportunities in welding uh, i want to thank you because after doing that course my fundamentals were really improved and uh, i was thank working you. in very micro scale company and now i am in very multinational company uh, very throughout good. the knowledge again and i did very good in, in the interview so mm-hmm. all thanks to you sir very very thank you are my guru and i do pranam <laughs> to you you are always welcome kundan you are always well- yeah. welcome any times any any problem if you will face related to welcome you can any time contact with me right you are always welcome to me thank you for your compliment thank you and so in much. this course thank also you. in this course also you will get lot of information very important information related to welding actually you know this welding is a very vast topics so for yes, every sir, topics you will get different different books are there for for a single topics but in this course i have covered so many topics so what happens if you will go to see the books uh, generally to search that book itself will take lot of time so i try my best to means uh, you can say uh, accommodate all this information in a single uh, you can say platform so that the participant can benefit from this course that way i try to organize so in this course also you will feel say so many different different topics like this residual stress and distortion related topics is a very uh, means important topic in the field of welding uh, like what happens you can imagine so so many different different research work is going on in these topics but what happens once you have fundamental knowledge on this definitely we, you will be very much beneficial in this advanced uh, related topics also you will see actually because uh, just after few weeks you will get the taste of all these things okay thank you kundan yes sir thanks sir sir may i ask one question if you yeah, kindly allow me yeah definitely definitely you yes, can ask yeah sir i want to ask when we do a weld when when uh, yeah. the uh, weld is, uh, is like hot okay so is, is it having tensile residual stress and when it is cold it is having compressive residual residual stress am i right no no during like- heating generally in weld zone the uh, in case of generally depending upon the material the type you can say in case of especially mild steel whatever the commercially available steel we used in industry that is called mild steel in that is still generally during heating time uh, the in well zone the residual stress generated is uh, compressive in nature you can say or initially during uh, melting state uh, in well zone you can say residual stress is almost zero okay zero level residual stress but once it starts solidifying uh, then what happens gradually here the tensile state rise stress rising what i am telling understand so during welding at molten state residual stress is not there in whirlpool but when it starts solidifying at that time generally what happens the tensile residual stress generated and i have already told you in this residual stress topics that residual stress is a balanced types of stress what does it means balanced types of stress balanced types of stress means uh, means you can say summation of uh, all forces and you can say wall movement about a particular cross section uh, point is zero that means it's a that means whatever the tensile stress will be developed uh, that's equivalent or equal amount of compressive stress will be developed in this uh, weld structure but in weld zone generally for mild steel after solidifying or cooling tensile residual stress is generated and away from that generally you can say balanced stress that is compressive stress is generated if you want i can uh, show it in uh, drawing also now you tell kundan what is your question yeah, yeah that was my question sir uh, i was thinking i, I was uh, having a wrong con myself i was thinking when it is hot it is having tensile uh, residual stress and when it no, is no. cold it is having compressive how no, i was no, thinking no. is because when, when it is cold it is shrinking so because ha. it is shrinking uh, the weld from the toe end like i am taking a reference of both the toe So where yes, if yes. I take the reference that, of both that type of that type yeah Kundan whatever the things you are telling that type of perception I had also when I was in B Tech level okay but what happens you see I am just showing let something if something is in tension state tensile state then in this uh, yes. medium the stress will be tensile or compressive 
first of all you tell tensile pardon sir tensile because if a structure is in tension types of state then in this yes. structure the stress will be tensile in nature so what yes, happens right, right. when the when the welding is uh, you can say when the welding is solidified at that times weld material whatever the expansion taken place during heating generally side material uh, at that time is in uh, you can say uh, cool state okay so that side yes, material yes, generally i mean you can say restrict during heating time restrict that weld material to expand so once something is expanding and if it is try to means uh, uh, contract by side material then your material uh, that material will be subjected to hot types of stress compressive stress compressive yes yes right heating yes, now what right, happens right. once it solidify then the side material remain as it is its position is same what i am telling under the material which is not subjected to heating that material yes. will be as it is in that position now once the material will start cooling at that time generally what happens material try to contract but the side material is generally it's pulling that means it's as it is in same position that the side material try to make it in tensile state it's restrict the material not to sink what i'm telling yes, understand yes. so yes, once yes. it is uh, not allowed not to shrink then your material will be in which state tensile state yes, or compressive yes. state tensile tensile sir okay got definitely it definitely tensile state what i'm telling understand because this yes. side material that is base material is generally doing playing the game to form the residual yes, yes, yes. state what i'm telling under yes, because yes. side material remain as it is if the side material yes, is not allowing to expand that's why what happens compressive residual stress is generating during heating times you can say then during cooling time the side material is not allowing the material not to uh, contract what i'm telling understand that's why what happens uh, once it is not able to contract then it will be subjected to tensile types of residual stress what i'm telling understand yeah fine yes, you sir, got sir, my understood. point yeah yeah thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you, you are most welcome so kundan asked me a very interesting question and whether any other questions are there if you have any question you can ask me yes when the transcript of this year will be released actually uh, one of the uh, participant asked me when this transcript of this course will be released very soon it will be released because almost it is completed so i think in different version already it has started so these things only nptl team can uh, tell okay but i know that okay this uh, transcription is already started we will get all the uh, things so residual stress related things whatever the question uh, kundan asked me i just want to explain little bit actually about residual stress here because as you don't have any questions that's why i am just going to explain that things if you have any questions you can ask me i have seen lot of participant already participated if you Sorry. have any questions yes 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 yeah if in that type question asked in a final exam yeah yeah yes tell hello what's your name prince hello prince tell prince actually final exam will be mcq types of question no descriptive types of question what i'm telling understand question will be fully you can say uh, uh mcq types of question so di directed to question or um, video lectures yeah, yeah from yeah. video lecture and whatever the topics i covered in this course nothing will come in exam out of this syllabus what i am telling understand everything will come from this uh, course only course material only so you go through this course uh, uh, carefully and try to what what i am telling try to gather the fundamental things 
what i'm telling understand because to take a course not to just learn, uh, uh, learn or hear the overall things you try to gather the fundamentals of this uh, different types of topics because the question will be based on that only friends because nothing will come out of syllabus whatever the syllabus i covered in this course everything will come from this syllabus only okay so you need not to worry about uh, this uh, how many percentage uh, actually number of question it will depends actually there can be 100 number of question or 50 number of question if it will be one on uh, mark question then there there will be 100 question if there will be two to mark question there will be or you can say 50 questions what i am telling understand but this question will be very fundamental uh, questions and nothing will come out of from this syllabus everything will come from this uh, uh, you can say uh, course material only course syllabus whatever the topics i will covered in this course everything will come from here only because this is sufficient for this topics you can say for this course you can say more than sufficient so how many questions are asked in uh, assignment generally in assignment uh, per week we used to ask 10 or 15 number of question within uh, generally 15 or 10 number of question per week you you i think already uh, got this assignment question prince hello so yes, what happens sir. it will be like that only so based on this assignment that assignment question also i used to give a uh, fundamental oriented only some basic very basic questions we used to ask whatever the question pattern we use in assignment more or less similar types of question will come in end semester exam also what i am telling but what happen there will not be any overlapping that means whatever the question i will ask in assignment that question will not come in you can say very few question may come or may not come but similar types of question will come in end semester okay friends but here it will be better to discuss about your doubt if you have any doubt what i am telling understand because this is open forum <coughs> so here it will be better to discuss about if you have any doubt any queries related to uh, welding topic that thing so all questions are mcq there are 75 questions are mcq mcq every question that means if there will be 100 question are one number one number only okay sir thank you Okay. <clears throat> any question then yeah so i think i ha you have already uh, completed uh, four weeks i think so in this four weeks i think i you have already i have already started during this four week about residual stress also because first of all i completed about different types of welding process depending upon phases uh, especially the uh, topics which i have not covered in my first course uh, rest of the topics uh, related to welding i covered in uh, for first 3 uh, 4 weeks after that i started uh, welding residual stress its fundamentals then welding residual stress how <coughs> we can mitigate this welding residual stress how we can measure the welding residue you will get so good good i mean uh, very uh, interesting types of topics you can imagine actually if you will go through this course i will i am sure you will be a good expert in this field because the topics which i have covered in this course this will be highly beneficial for a manufacturing industries guy because especially this course is uh, uh, highly beneficial to those engineer who want to join in a manufacturing industry or design oriented industry because uh, whenever you will plan to join in a manufacturing because especially uh, this course is for i have already uh, given this uh, means uh, you can say uh, details in my course introduction part itself this course is especially for mechanical then production and for uh, different types of you can say 
uh, in ITI or you can say polytechnics engineering related uh, fellow also can. Uh, but this ITI or polytechnic is uh, uh, generally a student will not be fit for this course because this is advanced level of course. That's why in this course, general this course is uh, uh, fitted for you can say BTEC, MTEC as well as in PhD level students. Okay, because this course is start from the very basic to very advanced types of thing. What I am telling us, and it started from the scratch, and it's end with a very high fundamental thing that you will get, that you will see also in this course. Because here you will learn. Uh, the very latest types of research topics, very latest types of advanced topics, especially very fundamental oriented things like what happens instead of uh, telling about a welding process in details. Here I try to means explain in details what is the effect of this welding actually in a, a structure. You can't imagine actually this welding is such a topics. Uh, if you do welding, these types of deformation, these types of uh, stress, which is generally negative effect in welding structure that you will learn from this course itself. But we can't avoid these things, these types of deformation or these types of stress generation in a structure, we can't avoid. Why? Because you see, once you do the welding due to this non uniform tangent, so many complicated, complicated types of phenomena occur in welding structure. So, you can imagine that so different, different types of complicated types of phenomena arise in welding structure. So, this due to this complicated phenomena in welding structure, it's subjected to different, different types of deformation, different, different types of residual stress, you can say. Okay. So, in this course, first of all, you will learn how this residual stress and distortion is coming. Then you will learn how, what is the fundamental of all these uh, aspects. Then you will learn how we can measure these things. And also you will learn how we can mitigate. That means how we can minimize this thing. Because you know this welding is such a process, these types of negative effect we can't avoid. But if you learn that, okay, we can mitigate or minimize this thing with the application of some different aspects. Then what happens? This will be highly beneficial to your uh, industry. So wherever you will go, if you will apply that knowledge uh, in that industry or in that manufacturing field, you will get respect from there. What I am telling, understand? That's why I always I will suggest you people you just attentively go through this course. And you will find that these types of courses, uh, these types of very fundamental course, you can say very rarely available uh, in uh, open forum. What I'm telling, understand. So I try my level best to design or organize this course in such a way so that uh, you can say that uh, you, you can benefit, you can get benefit from this course as much as possible. What I'm telling, understand. So what I was telling, these types of residual stage distortion, which is generating in a welding structure that is not able to uh, means avoid. Then you can think then, sir, what is the purpose of using welding process in the manufacturing industry? You see, if you will not use this welding uh, process in manufacturing industry, how we will uh, means combine or you can say uh, assemble different, different part together. What? But I'm really understand. You can think that there are a lot of other joining techniques are there like rebating, stapling, so many other different types of uh, techniques are there that also you can use. But what happens? There are a lot of drawbacks. There are a lot of uh, other drawbacks also in that types of techniques there. What I'm telling really understand. That's why you see welding we can't avoid because it has a lot of flexibilities. It has lot of advantage over other manufacturing or joining technique. That's why welding generally widely used. So in this course, you see, I have also discussed about a very advanced welding techniques that is called friction stir welding process. You can see because as you don't have any question, that's why I am just giving you some very uh, uh, brief idea about all this. If you have any question, I will discuss on that questions. What I'm telling and as you don't have any question, that's why I am just discussing because instead of sitting in front of a live session, it will be better to talk. What I'm telling, understand, give some lights 
give some fundamentals about these topics. So in this course also you will find that I have discussed a very interesting topics, a very interesting welding process. That is a very new topics you can say. That is a very new topics. You can say that topics is started just before 25 years. You can say around 25 years. That is called fiction stair welding process. This is one of the categories of fiction welding process. So generally this is a solid state welding process. Fiction stair welding process is a solid state welding process. Lot of research, lot of scope of these topics nowadays available throughout the world. You can say because in fusion welding process, once you join the weld uh, structure with the help of melting the material, then what happens due to this melting, so many different, different defects arise in welding zone, you can't imagine. The, but I have told you, so many defects are arising, then also we can't avoid welding process, correct? So, so many different, different types of uh, welding defects arising in welding process. So that welding process, uh, that defect generally, we can't, you can say, that defect generally we can't avoid if we'll do joining with the help of this fusion welding process or liquid state welding process. What are those defects? That defect generally once the material is melt and vaporize, then what happens is they are developed different, different types of bubbles. They are different, different due to this bubble formation or gas formation, they are developed different, different types of uh, defect like porosity, glow holes, so many different things what I'm telling, understand. But you see, uh, if you'll do the welding with the help of that types of uh, liquid state welding process, that you can't avoid. That's why a new research come into picture. That research name is solid state welding process, where you need not to melt the material. What I'm telling, understand. What you have to do? They are generally with the help of a uh, solid state condition. That means you should rise your temperature in joining region in such a way so that this temperature should, will not melt the uh, workpiece material. It will just make the material like a paste form. What I'm telling under this plastic state paste types of form. Paste, uh, what I'm telling, understand. Paste means whatever the toothpaste we use, that types of paste formation types of plastic state, it's come. Due to this paste form and with the application of some pressure or force or rotating a rotational action, we can join to uh, work with together. What I'm telling that also I discuss in this course in details. So that is a solid state joining process where you can eliminate most of the defect which is arise due to what you can say which is arise due to uh, liquid state welding process that is fusion welding process. So that related in details I have discussed in this course and you have, will find what is the advantage of this welding process? Where is the application of this welding process? Generally, this uh, solid state welding process already started to join for low melting point alloy uh, in manufacturing field, like aluminum, uh, then you can say magnesium, different, different types of uh, low melting point materials widely generally uh, joining by using solid state uh, joining process that is called friction stir welding process in actual field al already. But what happens for high temperature material like titanium, then steel, mild steel, then uh, you can say high strength steel, then you can say nitanol, other materials actually. For that material also a lot of research are, are going on on this, <coughs> you can say, friction stir welding process. Okay. And Already, uh, we get a very positive result uh, in that joining uh, uh, region, you can say, which has far better, you can say, uh, defect-free joint than fusion welding. Because, because whatever the fusion-oriented uh, defect arise in that joint, that we can eliminate, like porosity, bolo hole, that types of things we can eliminate in this friction stir welding process. What I'm telling, understand. So that related things in details also I discuss in this course. You will find that things in this course. Okay, I have discussed there what are the advantages, what are the drawbacks of that friction stir welding process in details, its uh, principle, its physics involved, its categories, 
in details i have discussed you will uh, you, are, you will get all these things in this course this is this is really a very uh, uh, interesting and uh, very uh, you can say uh, fundamental uh, uh, and advanced course of welding process you can say apart from these things i have uh, tra means covered uh, design aspect different design aspect of welding process like uh, design aspect of welding process and welding jo joint especially as this course is only 8 weeks course that's why in this course i could not able to complete all the design aspect related to welding so that's why here i try to cover only uh, the design aspect Uh, uh, related to a static loading condition so in this uh, static loading condition i try to cover eccentrically if a welding is joint is subjected to eccentric types of uh, loading what should be the uh, welding characteristic what should be the welding size that things beforehand you can calculate before going to do actual manufacturing so if you will just you see uh, in a industry before going to manufacturing a particular part if you just join the if you just design that things beforehand and do the welding in actual field definitely your lot of things will improve what i am telling understand and you will get lot of respect in industry without getting the fundamental things if you just go to go uh, and manufacture without knowing the basic fundamental things if you just do the things definitely your things will not be that much better than whatever the things if you will do by knowing all the things what i am telling understand so here you will get all these things so i have another i have a plan actually another one plan i have i will uh, plot another course where i will try to incorporate all the design oriented phenomena phenomena of welding design oriented phenomena of welding where i will try to cover whatever the residual stress you observe whatever the deformation you observe if a welding joint is subjected to this types of residual stress then how this residual stress effect in design consideration like what happens let's say structure is subjected to uh, some fatigue types of loading so fatigue types of loading then if a structure is subjected to fatigue means cyclic types of loading is there or fluctuating types of loading is there if it is subjected to like that then what should be the effect uh, of welding on that fluctuating lo uh, loading case that means in fatigue life of a structure that related detail design topics <coughs> apart from that things i will try to co uh, cover different types of other welding design related aspects in that course that will be my next course okay so this is actually what happens whatever the different different course i i am planning to develop these are all fundamental course frankly speaking here everything is fundamental and you will get you will see everything is so nice and you will feel that okay every topics is uh, just well uh, means well organized and you can say this every topics is well explained because welding is such a course here you will see every subject knowledge is required correct every subject knowledge uh, is required why i am telling because in this course here you will see i will use sometimes thermal engineering related uh, fundamentals sometimes i will explain uh, solid mechanics related fundamentals sometimes i will discuss about design oriented fundamentals sometimes i will dis discuss about vibration oriented fundamentals so you see so this is such a interesting course where you will get the taste of every science topics science and engineering topics so welding is such a high fundamental topics you can imagine here is in this topics you will find the application of all physics all you can say all science uh, subject as well as engineering subject what i am telling understand that's why uh i will just uh, request you people to at least attentively listen this course you will get different different very important aspects and you will find that whatever the things you learn in uh, like uh, what engineering mechanics solid mechanics thermal engineering fluid mechanics that's application you will find in this welding uh, oriented topics 
what I am telling and this. And that's why I am just uh, telling and requesting you, you go through this course very carefully. You will get the taste of welding. Then I don't think that welding means what happens in roadside. You used to see in nighttime some then a spark is coming out and lightening the area and very, very simple uh, laborers or workers, they are doing all these things. That, that is called welding. That is not only the welding. You can imagine this welding technique is not only used for uh, joining the braking bicycle. What I'm telling, understand, this welding is using everywhere. What I'm telling and everywhere in the sense, this welding is using in uh, defense purpose, this welding is used in spacecraft, this welding is used in everywhere, wherever you will get, go, everywhere you will get the application of this welding process. Though the welding techniques are different, like whatever the welding techniques we are using to join uh, for breaking uh, bicycle, that welding technique is not generally using for joining of this aircraft or you can say spacecraft or very high uh, means defense purpose, defense oriented, different different types of uh, uh, manufacturing product. What I'm telling, understand that for that purpose we are using different different other types of welding process. Nowadays you can imagine so many advanced uh, welding topics are there, like advanced welding uh, categories also are there, like you laser welding, electron beam welding. And then you can say for uh, very sophisticated types of welding process also a uh, lot of other welding process are there so you will get uh, means very high uh, you can say very high or vast application of different different types of welding process and what happens after completion of this course you can you may also try to develop some new welding techniques by which our country and our, you can say, our next generation can be beneficial. What I'm telling, understand. So don't stop to uh, think about welding process just after this course. After this course, also you try to do some research in this field. What I'm telling, understand, try to develop, try, try to incorporate some new techniques in this field. Then only the next generation will be benefited. Na? That's why uh, don't stop here. Now, if you have any queries, any things, because this is a live session for your query, you can say uh, for your query, query oriented things. So, if you have any queries, you can ask me. Sir, I have not uh, yet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Kundan here. Yes, you tell. Yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, in groove welding, why uh, more reinforcement is not desired and why is it like that fatigue, it will reduce the fatigue strength if we give more uh, uh, reinforcement in groove welding or if in butt welding? Kundan, again you tell. It was not uh, very sir, clear. In, okay, uh, uh, am I audible now, sir? Yes, 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 you are audible, right? Uh, yeah, I'm saying in groove welding or in butt welding, why yes. extra reinforcement is not desirable why ah. how does it uh, reduces the fatigue strength of the weld when we ah. increase the uh, reinforcement how, do, how how does it uh, reduce the fatigue strength once you when you uh, uh, means uh, avoid the reinforcement that you are telling no, no when we are giving it like like in in, in butt welding yes. or in groove welding the, they say yes. the, the weld length should be uh, the thickness of the plate that is the best Very desirable good. condition, right? Yes, but we have provided yeah. some reinforcement, correct? Yeah, Top so if I am giving cap, cap reinforcement, if I am giving more cap reinforcement, then ah. they say it is not desirable and it will reduce the um, uh, the fatigue strength of the weld. Why is it so? Why is it uh, reducing the yeah. fatigue strength? Yeah, actually you see, always you should keep it in mind that, okay, I have already discussed in my first course, Fundamental of Welding Science and Technology, Wherever there will be a discontinuity, you see, yes, wherever sir, there will be a discontinuity, there will be a abrupt change, there is a chance of accumulation of stress. That right, right, I have sir, already I So, wherever there will be accumulation of stress, that is generally act as a stress riser. So, once the stress is more in a structure, right. it's definitely, it's uh, you can say, uh, your fatigue life will be decreased. That because SN okay. carves, if you float, what I'm telling, understand? 
because wherever there will be more forests, the life cycle will be less. What I'm telling, understand? Just little bit time. So no, you see, once this, uh, you see the water. But the reinforcement, you can say that reinforcement have some standard limit beyond that, and it's it has some standard configuration. What I'm telling, understand? That is required actually. So if it is uh, exceeding that criteria, then what happens? It become a drawback. You can say. What I'm telling, understand? So if it is because I have already discussed that there is a transition angle. Generally, you see at the well toe region. Whatever the corner point of the well, that toe region should not have an angle less than 145 degrees. Something like this. I have already explained during my last course that you can uh, actually, as you did my that course there, I have already discussed that thing. So generally, all yes, that yes. types of contour will not be there. Then your well uh, joint itself will be a. Uh, that types of that means that uh, well reinforcement will act as a discontinuity. So whenever there will be a discontinuity, then your stress line will not uh, go. Um, that means a stress line will not go proper fashion way. What I am telling understand. Due to this, in that abrupt change location, there will rise the what stress. So once there will raise the stress, that stress act as a uh, means uh, negative effect in uh, welding, you can say. Little bit I should tell you by drawing that thing, that will be better for you. Little bit I am just explaining how this stress impact the uh, welding, uh, means fatigue life. Even of SN curve, little bit I am explaining. Okay, one minute. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That will be very. Okay, Kundan, you see, I am just drawing this SN curve. Generally, SN curve is log log curve. Okay, here I am right is this is generally log n. This is generally log stress. So, in case of mild steel, I am just drawing directly. Generally, SN curve is look like this for fatigue life addiction. So, this is a stress. This vertical axis is a stress. So this is called endurance strain, and this is generally this point is actually 0.9 drawing times of sigma ultimate. So the drawing is not on, on camera. The drawing is not on camera, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I am just sharing this thing. Okay. Okay. I think I have not so, shared so, this no, thing. That's point, okay. I am yes, sharing. Right. Point. Now it will come. Yes. Thank you. I am sharing my uh, this thing. Then it will be. It will come. The screen I am sharing. <coughs> Now it is coming. Now you see this horizontal yes, axis is uh, generally uh, you can say uh, number of cycle and this vertical axis is uh, stress versus number of cycle. This thing. What I am telling, understand? Stress versus number of cycle. One minute. Okay. So this is stress versus number of cycle. Curve is look like this. This is general. This point is you can say a point nine ultimate stress. This is generally endurance strength. Uh, endurance strength. What is the definition of endurance strength of a material? Endurance strength of a material is defined like this. Uh, a, the stress level at which you can say your structure will not fail due to fatigue. That means it can sustain infinite number of cycle below this stress level. Okay, that is called endurance strength. That is very well known to you. Now you see this number of cycle. Generally, you see if your stress that means this is generally this line represent the safe line of you can say SN curve. This this every point is safe point you can say. If the point is within this within this limit uh, means uh, boundary line, then your structure is safe you can say. Now you see if your stress let's what happen if your stress is high, then your number of cycle is this is number of cycle. This is number of cycle is less. Now, if the stress is less, then your number of cycle will be more. Then let this is n1. This stress was let this stress was sigma1. Sigma1 corresponding to n1 stress. Sigma2 corresponding to n2 life cycle. What I am telling, understand? Now here you can see this n1 is greater than n2, but here sigma1 is 
sorry n1 is less than sorry one minute n1 is less than n2 but sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 so if the stress is more your structures can sustain less number of cycle if the stress is less your structure can sustain more number of cycle what i am telling under the kundan is it clear yes yes sir yes, very clear sir now you see now you see now once your well bit what you are telling let's this is a bar welded joint here i am joining then it will be more clear to you so you are telling this is the well bit okay so this 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 is generally top reinforcement this is called bottom reinforcement correct now you are telling once this top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement is higher side then generally fatigue life decrease that you are asking correct kundan exactly Hello? sir exactly so yes, why sir, exactly, exactly. Because, because what happens this top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement have some acceptable limit what i am telling understand within that limit generally you can say your uh, fatigue life is not affected that means it's not act as a stress riser otherwise if this this shape is little bit other fashion then what happens this corner point you can say here sudden abrupt change is occurring this toe region this is called toe region so where generally sudden abrupt change is occurring so wherever there will be abrupt change that point generally act as a stress riser what i am telling under that means here stress is increased so once stress is increased then you can say uh, your life will be less you see here itself you can see because here you can see a stress is inversely proportional to number of cycle that you can say what i am telling understand that way you can think now apart from these things whatever the things i am to apart from this thing if your volume of material increase then chances of accumulation of defect that means porosity blow holes some inclusion and other things also will be more in that well reason what i am telling understand so that also act okay. as a you can say uh, decrease fatigue life on a, a structure what i am telling understand that also effect to decreasing the fatigue life that is also another aspect this is one aspect that is another aspect that's why i have already told you that means in case of transitioning in case of transitioning means two dissimilar types of plate if you go for joining there i have already yes, told I remember, you i remember yeah they are generally there is required one in four two, two. techniques on in four one in by four yeah tapering tapering is required that means you that types of if abrupt change is there then here then the stress line concentration will be more in this corner location so it will deteriorate the fatigue life what i am telling understand or life of a structure because if it's subjected to high level of stress if it's subjected to a more stress at a particular location definitely it's uh, you can say uh, its fatigue life will be decrease how it is that i have already told you because then i stress increase number of cycle decrease what i am telling understand but if the stress level is above you can see if the stress level is above endurance stress what i am telling understand but below below uh, because below endurance stress uh, level your things is not affected but in case of discontinuity the stress level generally within a range of very high it's within a range of ill stress or even more than ill stress also because there is occur stress concentration so stress concentration you know its factor stress concentration factor can be different what i am telling understand stress concentration factor you can say stress at that location divided by nominal stress that types of definition is there generally two types of stress concentration so stress concentration factor sometimes it can go to 2 3 4 like this types of stress concentration factor can be so two times means two stress concentration factor means in the, in this location if the stress concentration factor is 2 then your stress level is two times than nominal stress what i am telling understand that's why what happens you can say if the stress level increase then fatigue life decrease this you can get from this stress strain curve also what i am telling understand uh, stress versus strain uh, or sn curve this is called sn curve 
फैटिक लाइफ का इज इट क्लियर कुंदन यस सर यस सर वेरी क्लियर सर थैंक यू सर ओके वेरी गुड थैंक यू थैंक यू इफ यू हैव एनी अदर डाउट यू कैन डायरेक्टली कांटेक्ट विद मी वी कैन डिस्कस देयर आल्सो बिकॉज़ लाइव सेशन इज फॉर 1 आवर ओनली राइट यू आर ऑलवेज वेलकम बिकॉज़ नाउ आई एम योर यू कैन से कोर्स इंस्ट्रक्टर ऑफ दिस कोर्स सो आई एम ऑलवेज विद यू फॉर 24 आवर यू कैन से इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट related to this topics whatever the topics i covered apart from these topics if you have any other doubt related to welding you can ask me you are always welcome thank you sir i think already time is up correct do you have any question if you don't have any question then uh i think uh, we can stop discussing here i am also uh, just telling you at the end uh, this is one hour discussion forum only apart from these things if you have any queries you can directly call me you can directly first mail me after that i will give my contact number to you uh, after that what happens you can directly contact with me okay any times any uh, doubt related to welding you are always welcome ओके हेलो क्वीन आर यू देयर हेलो हां हेलो सो इट इज ऑलरेडी वन आवर सो एज द मींस पार्टिसिपेंट डोंट हैव एनी क्वेरीज सो शैल वी स्टार्ट स्टॉप हियर कुंदन that things yes, already i have introduced in this course you will find there are different different yes. types of welding sequence which i have incorporated and discussed in this course where you will yes. find what is the heating effect actually in uh, welding life uh, cycle as a fatigue life cycle of a uh, welded joint as well as here you will find what is the welding sequence effect in residual stress distortion in details i have discussed in this course. yeah yeah like like okay. i i i want to imagine like in what direction will the deformation be or the distortion be if i if i'm welding in this position or in this way you know so sometimes it become hard to imagine before welding no 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 i that i am telling actually you see uh, what i have already told you welding is such a phenomena it's a very means you can say it's a very unpredictable types of phenomena you can say yes. but yeah yes. definitely if you have fundamental knowledge you can control most of the thing that's why you see for let's if your it depends not only your welding parameter it depends on what types of material you are going to join what types of whether it is thick section thin section so depending upon different different types of uh, uh, parameters uh, generally affect the joint quality what i am telling understand so for thin types of material you will get one types of things for thick types of material you will get other types of thing but if your fundamentals is fine everything you can uh, control what i am telling under that's why you see whenever you go for joining some uh, plate beforehand you should gather the basic fundamental what actually you should do without knowing if you will just do the things that will not be uh, means uh, will not be able to predict or will not be able to control what i am telling understand so beforehand we have to well organized patterns or well organized design of procedure you should have in your hand after that you go for doing that thing like i am just telling if you do the welding what happens it is start bending so once it is start bending whatever the gap you are providing that gap is generally if it is not properly tacking your gap is also opening what i am telling understand this gap once it will open or uh, contract 
in that region your well material deposition will be more or less so once your well material deposition at a particular location will more or less that will create one types of sinkage force expansion force what i am telling understand so what happens beforehand you should have all fundamental things how we should control all this uh, root gap opening root gap closing phenomena for that what should be the precaution you should take everything general not only root gap and other things other concept of different different types of s preparation this thing that things if you have beforehand in your these things you will not find any criticality in welding uh, joining what i am telling understand kundan that's why beforehand you should think if you have thin material you should think in one way if you have thick material you should think in other way if you have root opening or gap between two plate you should think in one way if don't have the gap gap between two plate you should think in other way this uh, some uh, aspects i am telling so depending upon your situation depending upon your i mean uh, position or whatever the aspects you should consider all these different different types of concept all these different different types of aspects together after that if you will go for doing the things your things will not be erratic that i can assure kundan what i am telling understand yes yes so be- before hand you should be well means organized and well equipped about all these things after that you go for doing the thing what i am telling understand yes sir okay thank you thank you bhai thank you hello sir yes abhishek yes sir so that you have given the video lecture is ah. it possible to download the pdf form in the pdf form yeah pdf form will be provided definitely this pdf form at the end will be provided or in between also i think already okay. we have provided the pdf form to them they will provide it nptel guys okay 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 thank you okay. thank you sir thank you okay. yes i think sir, no other questions yeah sir one question jo jo pucha jayega to matlab video lecture se question rahega ya fir segment se video lecture only video lecture whatever the topics i covered in this course based on that only mukesh everything will come okay sir okay sir thank you bhai ओके वीडियो लेक्चर के सर पीडीएफ जिससे मिलेगा तो मतलब अभी तो अपलोड नहीं हुआ है ओ शायद वो एनपीटीएल टीम विल अपलोड इट व्हाट आई एम टेलिंग अंडरस्टैंड ओके सर आई हैव ऑलरेडी प्रोवाइडेड देम एवरीथिंग व्हाट आई एम टेलिंग अंडरस्टैंड ओके सर हेलो आई थिंक नो अदर क्वेश्चन सो टाइम इज आल्सो ऑफ ठीक है सर आप क्लोज कर सकते हैं रिक्वेस्ट सो व्हाट इज योर नेम भाई माय नेम इज अर्णव ज्योति ठाकुरिया अर्णव ओके अर्णव थैंक यू सो शैल आई लीव ओके सर ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सर